people that golf clap. Listen, not yet. You have to know what to clap it for, right? We were up 100% year over year for the month of September. So give yourself a clap there. Filling it, right? Look at that. Yeah. It's like the Loch Ness Monster commercial. You see that? The Loch Ness Monster. The golfer guy. There's a lot of emotion out there. <laughs> okay, so that's number one. Number two is tonight is the last night to buy your Super Saturday tickets to be eligible for recognition or promotions. So if you've been promoted be between July and the month of October and you don't have Super Saturday tickets, tomorrow promotions go in. We do not buy promotions and recognition for people who have not bought tickets, right? So how many of you have tickets for Super Saturday? Good. How many of you don't have tickets for Super Saturday? Raise your hand. Okay. You we got some perps here, you all. Okay. So listen, this is six months of training jammed into two days, but it's the biggest one we've ever done by a straight mile. We've got incredible leaders there. Listen, unless Bill Gates is having a conference with you about signing over the rights to Microsoft Friday and Saturday, there's nothing else you could be doing in your life that would be as important to your future as being here. Unless, of course, you don't want to win. Then wasting time, sitting at your job that's taking you nowhere, bowling, eating on TGI Fridays, those things would be acceptable answers, right? So so raise your hand again if you don't have tickets. Raise them high. Everybody take a look around. Public shame. Now time out. Keep them up. Keep them up. Keep them up. Keep your hand raised if you're going to buy your tickets tonight. I'll buy it. What? Oh, none of you. Oh, my God. going to buy it. Okay. None of you. When is it? You guys. I don't know about you all. When is that? <laughs> all right. Uh, number three is Atlanta's bonus points. Okay, so you got two months left. One by 1,000 personal gets you 10,000 bonus points, just like last month. And then you qualify at your level, you get another 35,000 bonus points, right? How many of you have watched the standings of where you are? You know where you are in the contest. One of you, two, three. Okay. How will you win, you all, if you have no idea where you are? You can't, how would you possibly know, right? Imagine going to a football game. You go to U, U of M, you walk in, you're like, what's the score? Everybody's like, I don't know. Nobody's keeping score. And there's all cheering, well, what's that? did that guy just score? I don't know, right? Well, who's winning? Beats me, right? And that's how you guys are playing your business right now, right? Nobody's keeping score. You're like a bunch of Canadians running out on a soccer field kicking each other in the gym with no ball. Okay. Let's go to uh, number four is dinner with the winners contest. Uh, Elzerman's are winning this right now. Good job, Elzerman. So, so on Friday night, right, on the Friday night, there's an invite only dinner with the winners at Lely's. How many of you have been to Lely's? None of you. Okay. So everybody Google Lally's tonight and go look at their food. This is one of the best steak houses in all of the state of Michigan. It's right up the road here. It's a hidden gem, right? They moved it from downtown to the Silverdome like 20 years ago and then the Silverdome shut down. So that wasn't a good move, but, right? <laughs> but you know you're at a great steak restaurant when there's no steak sauce. How many of you have been to a steak restaurant where there's no steak sauce? Okay, a couple of you. Right? And, you, and the first time you go, you're like, how could you be a steak restaurant with no steak sauce? And then you eat the steak and you understand fully why there's no steak sauce. So you and your partner win top seven personal life producers between, nap, between month start and the 15th. Okay? So dinner with the winners is the best part of that whole event. You're with the top of the top of the top people going to a place apparently you all don't feel like going to, right? Okay, I wouldn't either if I was gonna spend 80 bucks a plate for dinner, right? Okay. And, uh, and hanging out and getting that one-on-one -on -one time with big leaders, right? You are who you hang around. So again, you get two choices. You're gonna be with some broke folk on that Friday night. You're gonna be with some folk that are going where you're going. That's yes or yes, right? You're gonna be with some broke folk, some wealthy folk, right? If, if your goal is to have wealth, financial dependence for you and your family, go get around people that can help you get there, right? Okay, uh, next is uh, Super Saturday, Relentless Blue Shirts. How many of you have your Relentless Blue Shirts from convention or anything else? Okay, so you can order some shirts, but we need to know like tomorrow, okay? So you all can find me on GroupMe. Do not send it to the hierarchy or we'll kick you off. We don't want 32 yeah. people telling me your shirt sizes. 12 bucks, they're, they're blue and orange, okay? They're sweet material, we all wear them together, we all sit together, okay? So if you don't wanna buy a Relentless shirt, that's okay, you don't have to, you just wear a baby blue shirt, right? My man back there, okay? You'll fit in, okay, right? Uh, but make sure you're not wearing like orange or some other stupid color, right, okay? 
Uh, do you have a question? Yeah, it's, it's the same relentless shirt from Atlanta, right? Same relentless shirt from Atlanta. So if you went to Atlanta, you got your shirt. If you bought some extras the last time we done, we, we got your shirt. If not, I need to know your size, okay? And you need to pay me 12 bucks for it. I'll order them, but if you're like, eh, I changed my mind, I don't want a shirt, I will strangle you with a shirt, right, okay? Until you give me the 12 dollars Okay? Um, so, uh, here's the schedule for Super Saturday is uh, Friday is 1 to 4.30, product training, okay? And then dinner with the winners, an RVP meeting, but none of you are RVPs, so you're not invited, okay? And uh, Saturday morning is 9 to 3, okay? There's a half hour for lunch. You can bring food, or the, uh, the uh, youth group at the church that the meeting is at is going to be selling pizza and pop, super reasonably priced, and the proceeds help them fund their missions trip. Okay, so either way, you want to fund a good cause, come and eat some pizza, you want to bring your own food because you're a health nut, bring your own food, but you're gonna have 30 minutes, that will not be enough time for you to leave, go somewhere and come back because it's in the boons. There's nowhere to eat right around there, okay? I promise you, okay? Um, and that's Saturday at what time? Saturday, nine to three. And that's right at the church, right? That's at, well, that's at the church at Holly Road and I-75, the river. The last one, or no, it's a different one? Not different one. Okay. Yeah, we outgrew that one. This we got a lot more time. people. Nope, next Saturday, 15th, 16th, or 16th, 17th, I'm sorry. 16th, 17th, okay? Hey, listen, let me give you all some coaching, okay? Because I know you all want to win or you wouldn't be here, right? People that don't want to win didn't come tonight, but you guys want to win, okay? Big events are a big deal. Don't be walking around the hallway, coming late, leaving early. That's what wieners do, okay, right? There's winners and wieners. It's just a few letters different, right? And a few letters are you walking around the hall, showing up late, leaving early. Listen. Okay, how many of you have experienced massive success in your life financially? Raise your hand. Okay, one. Wait, minimum. Okay, massive success financially. Okay, so let me help you here. The reason you have not is because you have not learned the rules and principles of that from somebody who has done it and applied them over a period of time in your life. Yes or yes? yes. Okay, that's, that's why, okay? So just listen to me please, right? Come early, stay late, take notes okay you sit there and you get stuff bouncing off you and you don't take notes it's in and out right what'd you eat for dinner last night you all don't know right but if you wrote it down and you needed to reference it you would know okay so take notes come early because you never know listen you all life is about a few defining moments that you're gonna have where things just click for you and you see things differently than you see them now because if you see things the way you see them now you're gonna get what you've always got you understand that? So what, what you think about now, how you see things, your worldview, those sort of things is getting you exactly what you have. It's perfect. You couldn't have designed it better any way than you have it now for the results you're getting. If you wanna change your results, you gotta change the way you think and how you look at things and how you solve problems, the way you bring value to people in the marketplace. End of story. And you never know when you're gonna hear that one little thing, when that one person's gonna say thing, say something to you some way that you finally get it, and you're like, wow, I understand, right? I had a defining moment at a Super Saturday. My very first Super Saturday, I was not gonna go. I was thinking about quitting the business, and my boss at the church who had recruited me, it's like, are you coming to this thing? I'm like, I don't think I really wanna do it too much. I mean, I'm just kinda of doing it on the side. And, and he said, I'll give you the day off if you come. <laughs> and so I went and I sat there and it changed my life, right? I saw the business a whole different level than anything I'd ever seen before. And I made a decision that I was going to go out and work this. That one meeting I almost didn't go to could have cost my family more than you could ever imagine, right? And that's how some of you are going to be. So listen, your grandma's poodle is probably going to die <laughs> on Saturday morning. <laughs> the fence is going to get blown over right you're gonna to need to go grocery shopping and all the things that are designed to keep you where you are are going to come up to you and you're gonna get a choice you're gonna get sick you're not gonna feel good you're gonna be up late the night before and you're gonna make a choice and that choice is gonna be let life pull me back into more of the same or make a decision to change things okay you understand this is how winning happens, y'all. I'm trying to teach you, right, how winning happens. So anyways, tonight, we're gonna talk about mental toughness. 
And uh, this is one of my favorite subjects because this is make you or break you. What's the difference between somebody that wins and somebody that doesn't? They stay. They stay. It's pretty basic, right? They stay. Do you understand that statistically in this industry, in the network marketing industry, if you have been involved in your business for 10 years or more consistently, right, your average income is over $200,000 a year across every company. If you've been in for 10 years or longer, you are making at least $200,000 a year. That's a st statistical average, okay? So your job is to wait this deal out. But most of you won't. That's just the sad fact. Why? Because you're mentally weak. Just like you can be physically weak, most people are mentally weak. But it, you can change. You change by how you think and how you, uh, and how you uh, interpret things. So listen, I'm going to go through some stuff here. This is, oh, you probably can't see it. Will you hit the lights here, you all? Okay. Uh, oh, that's right behind you, George. Oh, there you go. Right there. Oh, thanks, bro. Okay. So I'm going to make this bigger, hopefully, so you can see. Okay. So this is right out of a, a booklet uh, by Hector Lamarck. How many of you know who Hector Lamarck is? Okay, Hector Lamarck is a $4 million a year earner in Prime America. He's been retired since 1992, has not been in appointment for 23 years, makes $300,000 a month residually. Right, and this is his workbook on mental toughness. This is what I bought when I first started in the business and got serious, and I did it all. I listened to the CDs, I went through the workbook. So here's the workbook, okay, and I'm gonna read this to you. You're not gonna win anything unless you develop a certain level of mental toughness. Because when you are building a business or living life, you're going to have a lot of challenges, okay? You're gonna have challenges in your life, you all. Everybody has challenges. Right now, when you have challenges, most of you feel sorry for yourself. Why me? Why do these things always happen to me? That's unfair. Let me help you. Life isn't fair. Life isn't fair. Stop wanting it to be fair. You're living in a fairy freaking tale, okay? <laughs> it doesn't exist, right? So let's just throw fair out the window. Life is not going to be fair. There's going to be things that happen to you that shouldn't happen to you. There's going to be people that quit. There's going to be people that don't help you. That's okay. That's life, right? So let's just get over that little baby stuff real quick, okay? Life's not going to be fair. You're going to have a lot of challenges. One of the keys to developing mental toughness is deciding in advance how you're going to react to challenges. Okay, hopefully you should be taking notes on some of this stuff. It's deciding in advance how you're going to react to challenges. John Maxwell says this. He says, you make the big decisions today before you need to make them, and then you manage them on a daily basis. Right? You make the big decisions now. Like, I'm never going to quit. So when you feel like quitting, you say, well, I already made that decision. That's easy. <laughs> right? You make the decision and never miss a meeting. It's my grandma's 85th birthday party today. My wife and kids are there. I'm at Tuesday night because I come to Tuesday nights. They know that. They chose to put it there. That's it. My grandma's at my house twice a week, right? She comes over and stays with my dad and plays all right. I made a decision. And so, you know what? Would I have liked to go into the birthday party? Sure. But I saw her on Sunday. I'm going to see her again tomorrow. I'm okay <laughs> not being at the birthday party. Why? Because I made my decision. So when they said the birthday party came up, Chris, I didn't say, gosh, I really want to go to the birthday party. This is an easy decision. I said, you guys go. I'm going to training. Right? Why? I made the decision in advance, and then all I have to do is manage it. Right? I'm not going to miss things, okay, because I've decided that in advance. Right? You have to have a pre-planned response. Uh, it's going to take the sting out of that challenge. Right, a pre-planned response to take the sting out of that challenge. Okay, when somebody says no to you, when somebody cancels their appointment, somebody joins and doesn't move forward, what is your pre-planned response going to be? You know what mine is? Next. <laughs> right, I call you not interested, you know what I say to myself? Next. I go to your house you don't want to buy, you know what I say to myself? Next. You call me, you say, I've been thinking, you know what I say? Don't hurt yourself. No. Next. <laughs> okay. When the challenge happens, you are not going to panic. You are not going to go 
uh, to that useless question of why me? Instead, you're gonna go right into resolving the challenge, which is what winners do. You're gonna have challenges sometimes, you all, and winners resolve the challenge. For example, okay, um, my, my Jeep's been in the shop for a few days, right? I left town, okay, and I need to get to an appointment. I didn't want to take my Corvette out in the rain, okay? So I had a problem. So I went on Uber. There was no Uber. Can you believe there was no Uber to come pick me up in my house? I couldn't believe it, right? Okay? Yeah. I'm like, apparently there's no Uber in North Oakland County because nobody came to get me, right? Okay? <laughs> that was a problem. That was a problem, right? So then I had to figure out how to get dropped off, et cetera. Well, I didn't have the time to have somebody come get me to take me there. You know what I did? I talked the guy into dropping it off at my house. Said, send one of your people. Oh. Right? And he went and dropped it off at my house. Why? Because I asked him to. Why? Because I had a problem, and trying to figure out or complain about the problem was not an option. I had to figure out how to get the thing to my house without me having to do it. Right? And so I did. Right? So we've got to be about resolving problems, not asking why me, but how do I fix this? How do I stop having this problem? Right? Okay. You need to look at each challenge as a wake-up call that says you've got to get a lot better at this. Right? Look at every challenge a wake-up call to say you've got to get a lot better at this. Right? Not why me. Not, I don't know if this is for me. It's hard. I've got to get better. Right? Don't wish this was easier. Wish you were better. That's if you're going to wish for something, wish that you were better. Right? You've got to look at the challenge. Right? You're a little deficient in this area and you need to go to work and shore up this weakness. Okay? Listen, the reason you are where you are in life and I'm where I'm at in life and Bill Gates is where Bill Gates is in life is we have all have strengths and weaknesses and some of us have learned how to accentuate our strengths and shore up our weaknesses more than others. Right? Most people let their weaknesses be their Achilles heel to life. And you've got to get rid of that. If you find weaknesses, we've got to shore them up, right? Okay. Does it mean that you're going to like it? Of course not. You're not going to like any of those challenges, but you have to make the decision in advance that when they happen, you're not going to let them detour you. Do you know how many people, listen you all, I can count on my left hand the number of agents I've had in nine years who have come to me and say, I'm quitting Primerica. Less than five. Okay, but I've had seven, eight hundred people licensed. I have four hundred and fifty-five active right now. Where are the rest? If they didn't come to me and say I'm quitting, where are the rest? They're on a detour somewhere, right? If you only knew what was going on in my life right now, I'll be back. I just have some things I have to deal with at home. These things, folks, are detours. They're challenges in your life that take you off the path. You have got to set a path and you cannot let challenges in your life detour you or you'll never get where you're going, right? You'll never get there. You cannot take the off ramp, you all, right? This is one of the biggest things I can teach you in this business. You're going to have reasons that are probably good to not stay engaged here. And the moment you do that, you're sunk, you're toast, goodbye. You might as well call me and quit because that's what's going to happen to you right? Life happens. Suck it up, buttercup. Deal with it, right? Okay. Uh, treat every challenge, every challenge is an opportunity to grow and to improve the areas you might be weak. This is a fundamental choice that you need to make, right? Here's how I looked at it. This is my mentality. Think about how it might be different than yours. When I find challenges, I look at them with excitement. I say, when I learn how to eliminate in this, in this in my life, I'm gonna be that much stronger than all the other fools that haven't. Mm -hmm. And pretty soon, you eliminate challenge A, you eliminate challenge B, you stop running out of things that detour other people. And then you are three-way ready to go. You understand? Right? I wanna teach you how to win. Winning is a habit, you all, and so is losing. By the way, what's a loss? Not getting what you wanted. That's a loss. Well, I kind of got there. I tried and it didn't quite work. No, you didn't try. You lost. That's what happened, right? Again, you're like the Canadian soccer players. You're not keeping score. You've got to keep score in your life. Did you get what you want? Yes or no. If you didn't, you didn't win. So reevaluate. 
What do I need to learn from this? How can I grow and get better? What steps can I take next time to ensure my victory, right? And then you start linking up win after win after win and you become a serial winner. You become a serial winner, okay? When you have constant problems in an area, it's because you have a weakness and you need to fix it. How many of you have recurring areas of problems in your life? You have a weakness and you need to fix it. Well, my family, they always, I had a guy once, really great agent, right? Whose family was a leech. I mean, there was like 10 of them. They, they all lived together. The parents didn't want to work. He's taking care of his younger brothers and sisters. And they just pull him, right? Pull him. And he was trying to do this to eliminate that, right? But instead, he got pulled back into solving their daily issues all the time. So-and-so needs to be here. This person needs to be here. Can we have $500 this week, right? That's a continual problem that will never get solved unless he solved the problem. Where is this guy? He's gone. He's on the detour. It's a good detour, but you know what would have been a better one? Come here and win and get enough money so you can live and then get your family on your payroll and have somebody else deal with their crap. <laughs> there you go. Seriously. <laughs> Have somebody else deal with the crap. I don't deal with crap. I don't fix things at my house. I don't mow my lawn. I don't do any of these things, right? Why? It's crap. It detours me from the things. So you're like, well, that'd be nice. No, it's called an investment, right? How much does it cost to mow your lawn? Have somebody lawn service in the summer? 30 bucks a month, maybe? I know y'all don't have a lawn as big as mine, most of you, right, okay? I don't know what it costs me, 25 bucks a week. It's $100 a month, I'm not driving around out there on a mower sweating like a hillbilly. Right? <laughs> Listen, you all, right? And that's an investment. The five or 10 hours of time I save not riding around my acre and a half trying to cut this deal, right, is goes where? Either into my business or into my family. Both places are better than into the grass. The grass doesn't care about you. Neither do your dishes or the dust. Some of you need to write that down. That stuff doesn't care about you. Why do you care so much about it? At the expense of your family's well-being. It's insane. Unless you're average and ordinary, and then that's just what everybody does. Because average and ordinary is about conserve, cut back, money is bad, money is evil. How would you know you don't have any? How could you possibly know? You don't, right? It buys you freedom in your life to do things with the people you care about. End of story, right? Okay? If you have a continuous focus on growing and improving, the number of challenges that you have is going to decrease, decrease, and the duration of the challenges is going to be a lot shorter. Doesn't mean you're not going to have them, but when you have them, now they're not detours. They're little bumps, and you're back on the way. Right? I still have challenges. I have people issues. I have things that happen in my family, but I've already decided how I'm going to react so they don't phase me. Say, okay, how does this fit into where I'm going and what my responsibilities are? And if I can't take care of it, I'll get somebody else to take care of it, right? You all understand that? So I can focus on the main things, which is my family, my faith, my business. Some of you are incredibly focused on things other than those three. Well, what's it getting you? What's it getting you? Why are you winning? Is it entertaining you? Right? Congratulations, right? You're a fantasy football fan, why don't you go and have a box suite at every game? And then you can be in reality there, right? Okay, watch it, right? I mean, you understand this sort of stuff, right? The average and ordinary man, they use so many excuses to justify where they are. Hey, look, if you're a good person, money's gonna make you better. If you're a bad person, it's gonna make you worse. End of the story. Is it money not the problem? We're the problem, right, okay? Let's go to the next slide here. Another key to being mentally tough is to develop a long-term view of life and of this business. The average and ordinary plan for the weekend, the wealthy plan for three generations. So they make different choices, right? Your choices, the sum of your choices is your life. That's how you got there. That's how I got here. You take your choices, you add them up, you got you. You take my choices, you add them up, you got me. If we would have traded choices, we'd trade places. Except I would be a female and you would be a man. Or you know, yeah. But other than that, it would be roughly the same, right? Okay. So he says this, I looked at Primerica like I was going back to school. You've got to look at it as a long-term thing. Four years from now, 
you're going to know everything and you're going to be really good and you're going to be making a lot of money so don't worry about how you feel right now what a great way to look at this business right yep. let me let me give yeah. you a parallel how many of you have gone to college how many of you paid more than $99 to go to college okay very good okay and so you spend how many hours a week at college or in college related things or in transit to and from college too long how many hours a week on average while you're there 40 50 yeah like a full-time job okay so you're paying to go to work to spend your time right okay and at the end of four years what do you have as a guarantee nothing I don't think college is bad okay I went to college okay but if you're willing to go through it with no promise of return you're gonna pay 40 or 50 grand and waste four years of your life why won't you give this more than 90 days before you make your evaluation on it right I mean that was pretty much my choice that's that's how life works you all you've got to you've got to take a long-term view of, of life if you do that you make really good choices most people don't they see two feet in front of their face what do I want right now what's the most convenient thing right now with no regard to how this is going to help them or hurt them in the future right you understand okay look at each year as a learning experience you need to graduate with honors and have a fantastic career okay so he's talking about um, different years here okay and, and um, we're gonna go I'll just skip through that because I don't have the rest of it well let's go on with the CD that he's got yep and then I'll top this you can go through it it's a workbook and fill it all out don't expect other people to appreciate you when you're trying to be great. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah. Truth bomb. <laughs> <laughs> Don't expect other people to appreciate you when you're trying to be great. Since most of the world is trying to be average and fit in, they're not going to appreciate you. That's okay. That's what most of the world is trying to do. They're trying to fly below the radar and fit in, make everybody like them, be one of the guys or one of the girls. They're trying to do something different than you're trying to do. They are not going to appreciate you. You know what the worst part about it is, is you, if you look at people that are really well off, famous people, movie stars, sports players, everybody idolizes those successful people. Why? Because they have some sort of talent or physical attribute they were born with that you and I don't have. And so we see them as special. But people don't like when you and I win at something like this because they could have done it too and it convicts them it does it convicts them when they see you winning and they know they were just like you and they had the same opportunity and they didn't take it right okay uh, their unconscious goal is you have to be like them they may be satisfied with the status quo but we don't have to join them that's ultimately what they want you make people uncomfortable when you raise them to a higher standard. This is how life works, you all, right? Uh, you know, uh, 12 years ago, right, I became a, a Christian, and I there were some things in my life that I just found no value in anymore mm -hmm. that my friends and I used to do together. And I'd go around them, and I'd show up to the party or whatever, and they're slamming down drinks. I haven't had a sip of alcohol in 11 years. Not because I don't think you should or whatever. It's just a choice I made. I found no value in it, right? It has calories. It makes me do stupid things. Well, those two things are bad, right? I'm bad and stupid if I do that, right? So it's like, I don't know how it's going to help me, right? But I go there to the party, and I'm there, and I'm not telling them what to do or not what to do, but just me being there made them feel what uncomfortable because I had set a higher standard in my life and that standard and their standard clashed right you understand what I'm saying okay one of the most important lessons I learned was to disregard what people thought about me disregard what people think about you what does it matter what they think about you all one day you're gonna be dead and so are they what's that what was the point? What was the point? Who cares? Hey, if they're not writing you checks to pay your bills, who cares? 
right? If what I did was legal, ethical, and moral, what others think about me is none of my business. Are you doing the right thing here? Yeah, so who gives a crap what other people think or their opinions? Are you paying your bill with their opinions? You writing that check out your mortgage with Sarah's opinion? She <laughs> thinks I'm in a stupid business and you send that in, see how that works. It doesn't. You laugh, but you act like they're paying your bills. You do. You're trying to make sure you don't offend them, step on their toes. I want them to think good about me. If they think bad about you, because you're trying to improve your life and help other people, something is wrong with them, not with you. You don't have to be mean or judge them, but you just need to understand who has the problem. It's not you, it's them. Listen, no matter how hard you try, you're not gonna make everybody happy. Let me give you an illustration I try to teach all my new people. The first time they have a really negative experience with a client or somebody who's talking bad about them. And it's gonna happen. If you're here for a period of time, that's gonna to happen to you. Not because of anything you did, but because there's people who don't like to see other people trying to get ahead. End of story, okay? Think about this. If you ran for the President of the United States, okay, and you won, you, on the first day of being the most powerful person on the planet, 50% of the people hate you. They hate you, and you are the most powerful person on the planet. Let's look at Jesus. Jesus' sales pitch was, for free, I will absolve you of all your sins and you can spend forever in heaven. Doesn't cost you a dime. No strings attached. All you got to do is believe in me. Eternal life forever, free from damnation. No cost. No cost. Okay? No monetary cost. Okay? And yet, six of the seven billion people walking on this planet do not want anything to do with that. Yo, we're not offering eternal salvation. <laughs> we're offering financial salvation, but that's a strong, that's a distant second from the first one. Okay? So that's a distant second call. Okay. If it happened to Jesus, it's going to happen to you too. So that's okay. You see how I think? Right? I think a little different than you, don't, don't I? You need to pick that up and learn that. And say, how's this guy think and how do I think? And try to meld those as much as you can. You need to be your own person, have your own thoughts, be able to think through, right? But what I'm telling you is true. So if something is true and two people are looking for the truth, they're both going to find the same thing. Right? Truth is not relative, you all. Truth is, is believe it or not, is absolute. If you don't believe that, right? You need to go and do some thinking. There's something wrong up here. Because there are things that are true. If there weren't, we wouldn't be able to fly airplanes. We wouldn't be able to do a lot of this stuff, you all. There are things that are true and constant in our world. And we can replicate it a million times out of a million times. Right? There, there are things that are true. And your goal needs to be able to think clearly and seek truth with your mind. Because if you do, you'll always end up at the right destination. Always. Why? Because it's true. And true is right. Do you understand? Okay. And so I'm not just talking like faith stuff. I'm just telling you, this is how the world works, you all. Right? Most people are confused about what is true and what is untrue. And therefore, their life is a total mess because they're operating under assumptions of things that aren't right. Well, if you do things that aren't right, what sort of answer are you going to get? Wrong. You don't have any money in your bank account? Wrong. You don't have any freedom of your time? Wrong. Okay, these things are wrong. You've gotten the wrong answer because somewhere you have believed things that are not right. Do you understand this? Okay, this is what mental toughness is about. If you can see things clearly, then you'll make the right choices. If you make the right choices long range, you get the right answers in your life. Pretty basic, isn't it? They should teach a class on this in high school. We've been going for 30 minutes. Right? And I've probably taught you more value in your life than you, anything you've ever learned in college about how to win. Do you apply this crap to anything? Do you want to be a great golfer? Find out things that are true about golf, learn them, and find the things you suck at and fix them quickly. <laughs> and take a long-term view. You're not being a great golfer tomorrow, or next week, or next month, or even next year. Right? But you'll improve. 
Okay. <laughs> Keys to mental, mental toughness, dedication, discipline, persistence, focus, tenacity, having a clear vision of where you're going, self-confidence, doing what you say you're going to do, commitment to continuous personal development. Okay. Next slide. Life is not about what happens to us, it's about how we respond to what happens to us. Okay? Very few things in life are good or bad. They're neutral. We assign meaning to them. Is somebody dying a good thing or a bad thing? You think. What if it's Adolf Hitler? Is that person dying a good thing or a bad thing? It's bad that Adolf Hitler died? depends on the person. It depends on how you assign meaning to it. Do you understand that? Did you see that? If you're Adolf Hitler, you're not happy. If you're a Jewish guy in Germany in 1945, <laughs> you're pretty happy. But at the same time, death is something you can't really avoid. You're exactly right. So life is not about what happens to us and having avoided that thing. It's about what? How we respond to what happens to us. That's a pretty extreme example I'm using for you, right? But somebody calls you and cancels, that's maybe not what you want, but if you look at it as an opportunity to get better and you do get better and you make a thousand more sales down the line because of what that forced you to learn, was that good or bad? It was good in the long run. But most people can't look long term. They look at things that happen to them, they immediately assign, assign the wrong meaning to it. This is hard. God must not want me to do that. Wrong meaning. I see anywhere in the Bible it says life's going to be peachy keen and everything you touch is going to turn to gold and that's and you're just going to be a superstar at everything. That's not what it says. Right? Okay? Things aren't going to be hard sometimes, but if we look at them as opportunities to get better, we can turn things that are hard into things that are good. You understand? We're not born winners. We're not born losers. We're born choosers. Okay, we're born choosers, you all. We have a choice every day to do what a winner does or to do what a loser does. Okay, that's our choice. We can get up today and decide today's gonna be a great day, right? Well, what if something bad happens? Let me refer you back to this. <laughs> bad things happen to me all the time. That doesn't mean I have to ruin my day or have a bad attitude. Right, and find the good. There's good. Every problem has the seed of an equal or greater opportunity. Good, I wait for bad. Right? So look, I mean, it depends, right? Every problem there's a there's a seed of equal or greater opportunity. That's how life works. Okay. So here's some inside peril to mental toughness. Okay, what does inside peril mean? These are things you'll do to yourself. Okay, unclear goals. Okay. One of the easiest ways to succumb to mental weakness is by not having goals. If you don't know where you're going, any path will take you there. So what do you need this for? If you have no destination, it could be anything that gets you there. Right? Unclear goals are the number one reason for failure that I see. If you don't know where you're going, right? Hey, look, you all, if all you want is 40 grand a year and to just fit in and be one of the guys or be one of the gals, you should quit this. Because this is the hardest way to ever make $40,000 a year in your life. This is the easiest way to make $40,000 a month you will ever see in your life. <laughs> Seriously, right? This is not designed for people to come past time, punch their clock, and walk out with forty grand a year. Right? That's not what this is for. If that's what you want, you're in the wrong deal. Right? Okay? If you want to become wealthy and financially independent, have control of your time and money and go do things for your family that you care about, right? This is the best vehicle you've ever seen. But if you don't know where you're going, then it doesn't matter, right? I was in Toronto speaking for a friend of mine. His name is Bobby Gokul, Indian fella. He's an $800,000 earner, been making six, seven, eight hundred thousand dollars a year for 20 years in the business, right? And I pull up at his house, got a beautiful house. Right, he's got three cars, he's got a Range Rover, a Mercedes, and a Porsche. And they're, they're all a little, they're getting a little old, and he gives them to his family members when he's done. When he buys new cars, he just gives his Porsche to his cousin, or his grandma, or 
his grandma's probably dead because he's like fifty, right? <laughs> right? But he's telling me, like, I gave this car to this, I had this car. He doesn't sell them and trade them into anyone. He gives them away to cousins and family members of different things, right? Okay. So, like, when's the last time you gave a car that wasn't a hoopty worth a thousand dollars to somebody? Right? When's that time? My dad's retiring next year, right? He's going to take a lot less in his pension to retire early. Why? Because I'm going to pay him. Right? He's going to make the rest up through me. Why? Because I have more than I need. Why? Because I'm a greedy, evil, rich person who doesn't care about other people. That's why. Right? That's why. That's what people on the outside think. Right? But they're not helping my dad stop working midnights in downtown Detroit, in the middle of a war zone. Right? Okay? I'm helping him do that. So, you know what? Take a hike if you don't like it, right? Do you understand that? And one day you're going to get that opportunity. The choice you make about what you do here is going to t determine whether or not you're able to go and save your family and do things for the cause you care about, right? Or if you're going to be everybody else would be a victim and have to depend on everybody else in the government forever, right? When's the last time you saw a homeless person helping the economy, giving jobs and opportunities away, bringing hope to people around them? When's the last time that's happened? It's not, because they don't have hope themselves or can't take care of themselves, right? How are you going to take care of anybody else if you're a freaking disaster? And the truth be told is, you're a disaster, just like a homeless person, except you live in a home. You're, you're six months away from being a homeless person, most of you. If you had no source of income for six months, you most of you would be homeless. So don't get all haughty about how much better you are than those folks. You're not better, right? You're not any better, neither am I. We've just made different choices, right? You gotta store up, you all, right? The ant and the grasshopper. Remember that one from kindergarten? You better go read that Aesop fable again, right? <laughs> Unclear why. Unclear why. You're not sure why you're doing this. Not only don't you go know where you're going, you're not even sure why you're doing it, right? What I always tell people this, right? And most of you don't understand this, so yeah. But you will, and that's why you need to get around. That's why you need to be at freaking dinner with the winners, you all. You need to go sit with some people that have changed their dadgum life. And you need to have conversations, hear this stuff, right? What is Steve Jobs? Most people don't know what they want until you show it to them. Your thinking's too small. You've been thinking small for a long time. So all you think is small. You need to get around some people that think bigger so that you can understand why you need to do this, right? And after you get that, if winning for your why is not enough to motivate you, you better wake up. You're dead on the inside, right? What if Benjamin Franklin said, most men die at 75, or, you know, men generally die at 75, but most men have died at 25 and walk around for the next 50 years. Dead on the inside, not going for anything, no big dreams, not making a difference, right? You got to get around people that inspire you to do that, right? So you're like, oh, I don't, I don't care about winning dinner with the winners. You better care. It's your life. It's your life. It's your family's life. The people you care about. The causes. Right? I give more money to my church than I used to make in a dad. Right? So their staff people literally live probably. Like there's probably one and a half people that live off. To, if you track my money directly, directly off of what I give to them. Out of my surplus and abundance other people survive and do the kingdom work, right? Well, that's not important to me. Okay, well, that's fine. Go be a taker like everybody else. Why not be a giver? Why not leave the world better than you found it, right? Distraction, we talked about that. Other other uh, word for that is the detour. Unmet or unreasonable expectations. This is another point where mental weakness will overcome you. I thought I'd be further ahead. Remember the four-year college thing? You don't know what to think about this yet until four years have elapsed on you. It's not possible for you to make an accurate assessment. It's just not possible. You don't know enough. You're not learning fast enough to make an accurate judgment. So if you're going to make an a, a judgment with inaccurate information, you should expect a what? An inaccurate result in your life, which is more of the same, right? Okay. Uh, and, and bad decisions. And we talked about this, but like, let me tell you some really bad decisions. Drugs, right? Hey, look, you all. 
that's going to ruin your life and your family's life. Right? And you're like, why are you talking this? Is this dare? Yeah, it's dare to not be a retard. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, you all. And I'm not meaning that to offend you, okay? You understand what I'm saying in that word, okay? Yeah. Don't be stupid and do stupid stuff, right? Okay? Because you're going to ruin your life, okay? Divorce. If you're divorced right now, there's nothing wrong with that. But listen to me, you all. You want to ruin your business real fast, right? Ruin your marriage. That'll do it. You'll lose half of everything you have. You'll spend the next year in court, okay? I promise you, there's a way to work it out, okay? If you want to work it out, right? My wife and I have been counseling two different times. Two different times. We're just like you. We fight about things. We have issues. You know what we do? We solve the issues <laughs> instead of allowing them to divide us, right? She wants to have a happy life and love me and be a great mom to our kids. And I want to have a happy life and be a great husband and be a great father to my kids. We both want the same things. We go about it differently sometimes and that causes friction. But at the end of the day, right, you got to have a long-term view. What's that going to do? It's going to jack up your kids, going to jack up your finance, going to ruin your business. Bad, bad, and bad. Also, you can spend, get away from this person. Come on, right? Okay, you understand that? Legal issues, right? Legal issues. Listen, you all, right? I've watched people blow up their business. I had, most of you don't know him, but a year ago, I had a guy who was the number one guy in the state. Making money, building a team. He was awesome at this. And he decided he was going to take a vacation in the month of December, came back. Decembers are a little slower, right? And he had a bad month. And you know what he decided to do? He decided to go in that back office and take out, if you're not on direct deposit, we send you checks. And we used to put them in the mailbox. And he went through sifting and looking for checks that were 90 days old, 120 days old, because in six months they go to unclaimed property. Just little checks. He figured they'd been here for months. Nobody's going to miss them. They're going to go there. And he started signing them over to himself. He got barred from our industry for life for 1800 bucks. That guy lost fortune. I sat on conference calls with lawyers and compliance people and listened to this guy bawl his eyes out for ruining his life because of a short-term decision. It's not worth it, you all. Go talk to somebody and tell them you're having a problem. Right? You understand this? This is a place you all, I, I hope that I've helped you understand. That I'm going to tell you how things are. Right? I'm be vulnerable with you and you can tell me whatever you want. Right? I don't want to be your therapist. I don't want to be your babysitter or your marriage counselor. Okay? But I'll help you as much as I can. Okay? And I'll direct you to some resources because it's not worth ruining your life. You know how many people are walking out around here that are ruining their life and never get a job because they got a felony for doing something stupid? Right? It's crazy. Now, with that last thing you said, you know, a lot of people. I feel that, I feel all this stuff, but the main thing with talking to someone is like, you can talk to anybody, but, you know, listening here can be a running mouth, so it's all about who you talk well, to. Sure, but well, that's why you talk to mentors and not idiots, right? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. so a lot of, but it's yeah. not even a Well, problem. that's called, that's another choice you make. Do I talk to this guy who tells everybody else's business, or do I go to somebody <laughs> who can, who's but in a position to help you? But you're not going to know, I, I, I'm saying it's more as like, a lot of people, they just feel they just they hold a lot of things in and they anchor it down in sure. their heart they don't know how to communicate and in this world of where everything's all technology social media behind well again screens, I, and you know, I appreciate what you're saying you don't know how to communicate yeah. it's like well the, it's because they're surrounded by idiots I mean that's the end of the story right if you go find somebody that's winning in their life they're there for a reason right and they probably want to help you if they care about you and if they don't care about you, I care about you. This is the first time I ever met you, but I really do want you to win. I'm glad you're sitting here. I'm glad you're taking steps to improve your life, right? I'm not going to go post your stuff on social media. I don't even know your name, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I mean, I wasn't saying. Yeah, I, I know, but that's. But do you understand what I'm saying? That's just an excuse. That's just small thinking, right? I mean, go find somebody that's where you want to be and, and have them mentor you, right? There are people in this world you can trust. Right? I mean, that's the end of the story. There are some good people. They tend to be way further ahead of you in life. They're not your buddies. If your buddies could help you, they would. If your buddies could do something different in their life, they probably wouldn't be your buddies anymore. You know what I'm saying? Not that there's anything wrong with that, 
But, you know, I'm still friends with all the people I was friends with when I started, but most of them are not very close to me anymore. Why? I took path A and they took path B. I'm not going to share my stuff with them because they're going to be blabbing about it on Facebook. <laughs> like you're saying, right? I ain't going to do that with them. I'm going to do it with people I care about and I know have my best interest at heart. And, and that, exactly. They're all around you. You just have to look for them and seek them out. You find mentors. Most people run from mentors and run from accountability because they want to be the same. But winners in life say, I'm tired of the same. I'm tired of the same. I'm going to go find some people that are where I want to be and I'm going to start learning from them. Right? Go to the pastor at, at your church. Go to the, There's people everywhere that, that, that are causes for good in our community. There are people everywhere who are changing the world. Right? And guess what? You find those people in the beginning and you listen to them, you all. <laughs> you listen to them. You follow the instructions they give you. And one day you become like them. And you turn around and you start giving back. Right? If you cycle that through a few generations, we solve a lot of problems on this planet. Right? Yeah. So, hey, why don't you start? Right? Was it Gandhi that said, be the change you want to see in the world? I don't know if it's him or somebody else, right? But you get a choice. You're not born a winner. You're not born a loser. You're born a what? Chaser. A chooser. And you get a choice. You get a choice to be a force for good or be like everybody else, right? Learn to take care of yourself so you can be a lifeboat for other people. And understand, if you're going to be a bridge of hope, you're going to get walked on from time to time. And that's your job. Right? That's your job. Build a bridge from point A to point B that other people can walk across. Right? You all understand? You all get that? All right. Uh, we've got four <coughs> minutes left. If you want to stop that recording, I don't know if you can do that, Josh. Uh, but uh, I'll open.